Today, we're looking at oil filters. The oil filter is an unsung hero that impacts how well your engine performs and lasts. So, how does it work? What are the different types? And how do you choose the right one for your car? So roll up your sleeves and let's get under the hood. Your car's engine performs optimally when it has clean motor oil. And your motor oil performs its best if the oil filter is doing its job. So the oil filter may not sound like something exciting, but actually it's quite important. It's the unsung hero because it impacts engine performance, fuel economy, motor oil life, and also the environment. Your vehicle's oil filter does two very important things. It filters waste, like dangerous pollutants and contaminants, but that's not all. It also keeps oil in the right place at the right time. So you can think of oil filters as the kidneys for the car. So how does it work? Let's take a look inside an oil filter and see how it works. First, we have the tapping plate. It has small holes around the edge, and that's where the motor oil enters the filter. The oil then travels through a filter material. It's made of a mesh of synthetic fibers. You can think of it as a sieve that catches the dirt, grit, and grime in the oil. The filter material is pleated to create a larger surface area within the same amount of space. The filtered oil then travels into the center steel tube. Then it exits through a threaded center hole of the tapping plate. The oil filter has a few other parts. There's the relief valve. When it's cold outside, motor oil naturally thickens. This makes it harder for the oil to travel through the filters. So the relief valve discharges a small amount of unfiltered motor oil into the center tube to your engine to give your engine a boost until it warms up. Then you have the two end discs on each side of the oil filter. They're made of metal or fiber, and they prevent unfiltered oil from passing into the center tube and into your engine. Some oil filters don't have these end discs, but use a sealant instead. The anti-drain back valve is a rubber valve with a flap. When your engine is off, the valve flaps shut to prevent oil from seeping into the engine and into the oil filter. Did you know that early cars did not use an oil filter at all? Some placed a rudimentary mesh sieve at the oil pump intake. But that wasn't really effective at all, so drivers back then had to get a whole lot of oil changes. The automobile industry changed in 1923, when two American inventors, George Greenhall and Ernest Sweetland, filed a patent for an automotive oil filter. They called it the Purolator, a name derived from the combination of the words pure oil later. It revolutionized the automotive industry. The early filters used a cloth weave. It sure was better than no filters at all, but it wasn't exactly pure oil either. Most of the oil was pumped from the oil sump directly into the engine's working parts. Only a small proportion of the oil was sent through a filter via a second flow path, filtering the oil over time. Several decades later, in 1954, Jack Wicks and Paul Crenshaw patented the spin-on oil filter. The slogan was, twist of the wrist. It was easier, quicker, and less messy to handle. Less than 10 years later, almost all domestic passenger cars had adopted spin-on filters. In the 1960s, disposable oil filters became popular, and cellulose and paper were used to reduce production costs. Today, the general shape of most oil filters remains basically the same but there's been progress with the filter material. Many still use cellulose and paper, while premium filters use synthetic. So exactly how important is clean motor oil? The biggest threat to your engine and its greatest enemy is actually tiny dirt particles, smaller than the eye can see. We're talking microns. So how small is a micron? As a point of reference, an average human hair strand is around 75 microns. An average human could see objects that are 40 microns or larger. A white blood cell in your blood is about 25 microns. A red blood cell is like 5 microns. Bacteria can be 3 microns, so we are talking tiny. An average oil filter removes particles that are 40 microns and larger. But General Motors did a study on diesel and gas engines. They found that a 30 micron oil filter, compared to a 40 micron oil filter, reduced engine wear by 50%. A 15 micron filter reduced engine wear by 70%. Dirt particles in the 10 to 20 micron range can do serious damage to bearings, cylinders, and other engine parts. That's because those tiny particles can get lodged between the parts, which causes heat buildups, which in turn causes damage to the engine. Let's talk even smaller. For example, 
The clearance between the piston ring and cylinder bore is incredibly small, usually 5 to 10 microns. According to the study, particles smaller than 10 microns generated about 3.6 times more wear on the rods, rings, and main bearings than particles greater than 20 microns. All this to show you how important oil filtration is critical to your engine performance and life. So let's talk about filter media. Those are the membranes that filter out motor oil contaminants. Today, the three common filter media are cellulose, synthetic, and micro glass filter media. Many disposable oil filters have cellulose filter media. It can catch particles that are 8 to 10 microns and clean up to 40% of the motor oil. In general, it's best to check and replace these filters at every 3,000 miles. If you want better quality, next up is synthetic filter media. It's effective at removing 24% of particles that are 8 to 10 microns small. In general use, filters should be checked out and changed every 5 to 7,000 miles. Most high-end filters use extremely fine metal or micro glass filter media. These fibers are 10 times finer than cellulose, yet they also have a lower oil flow restriction. That's why it only needs to be checked and replaced every 2 to 5 years or 10,000 miles, whichever is less. There are many oil filters on the market, so which one do you need? It depends on your engine type and your car manufacturer's recommendations in the owner's manual. Using the wrong filter can cause motor oil to leak out of the engine or the filter can just fall off. Either situation can cause serious engine damage. Most car manufacturers use a full flow oil filter known as primary oil filter. It filters 100% of the motor oil used by the engine, whereas other filters might clean only some of the oil. Another advantage of the full flow filter is that it allows motor oil to move more freely through the engine compared to other types of oil filters. So the full flow filter is especially useful in colder weather when the motor oil thickens. On the other hand, because it has a lower flow restriction, it also allows smaller contaminant particles to pass through. One type of full flow oil filter is called the cartridge oil filter. A typical cartridge oil filter has no metal parts, so it's easier to recycle. It's also easy to use, and if you mount it upright, you can usually inspect it without removing the oil. Another type of full flow filter is the spin-on oil filter. Basically, it's a steel canister paired with a paper element. Installation is fairly simple, and you only need minimal tools. In addition to full flow or primary oil filter, some car makers also install a secondary oil filter, also known as the bypass filter. The secondary filter supports the primary filter by cleaning less than 10% of the motor oil and then routing it back to the engine. It works independently of the primary filter and helps to remove contaminants that might have been missed by the full flow filter. One type of secondary filter is the spinner oil filter, also known as centrifugal oil filter. As the name suggests, it spins. We're talking about centrifugal forces up to 2,000 times greater than that of gravity. Some powerful stuff. That's why it can efficiently trap some of the tiniest contaminants from the motor oil. Typically, these filters have two sections, a housing chamber and membrane. A critical part of this filter is the base gasket, which prevents motor oil from leaking. But unfortunately, it's also one of the weakest part of the filter and isn't too durable. So if you use this type, be sure to check the base gasket at least once every three months or every 3,000 miles. Another type of secondary filter is the magnetic oil filter. It's effective in removing metal contaminants, but it's ineffective in removing dust and grime. The advantage to this filter is it doesn't need to be replaced, but just cleaned regularly. And of course, it doesn't work on aluminum because that's not magnetic, and cars have a lot of aluminum parts these days. Now, when it comes to oil filters, just remember that you get what you pay for. Lower quality filters contain light gauge metal, loose filter material, and poor quality gaskets that can lead to filter failure. Some filters can filter out tinier particles more effectively, and some are more durable and will last longer. So it's important to use a filter that fits your car's need. A common myth is that some people believe you should replace the oil filter at every other oil chain. If you think you're saving money this way, actually it's penny wise but pound foolish. If your oil filter gets plugged, the oil will go into bypass, which leads to faster engine wear. So I recommend you replace the oil filter every single time you change your motor oil, assuming you change your oil regularly. After all, why run clean oil through a dirty filter? The best oil filters retain 99% of its effectiveness throughout the life of the motor oil. As with all things, always check your owner's manual for recommended oil change intervals. But you tell me, do you have any funny or horror stories about your car's oil filter or motor oil changes? Please share by commenting below. If you liked the video, please subscribe to my channel for more car history and technology videos. Thanks for your support.